This is the 2019 Mazda CX-3 and it has been a big success for the brand in Australia. Currently, it ranks number two in terms of sales for small SUVs and found just under 17,500 new homes last year. In fact, Australians buy more CX-3s than Americans, remember a population of over 13 times more people. So today, we're gonna to have a look at this new facelifted model and see if we can answer the question to what's holding them back. Even though it wears the number three in the Mazda range, it's actually based off the Mazda 2 platform. In fact, when the CX-3 was first launched, the interior was a literal copy and paste from the Mazda 2. The biggest difference was you can get the CX-3 with all-wheel drive and what was underneath the bonnet. Powering the vehicle is a 2.0-litre Skyactiv-G naturally aspirated four-cylinder engine that pushes out 109 kilowatts of power and 192 newton meters of torque. That's routed through an either six-speed manual or six-speed automatic gearbox. New for 2019 includes styling updates with a new front bumper and new rear taillights, along with interior improvements and improvements to noise, vibration, and harshness. A reversing camera is also standard on all trims. So let's take a look inside. I want to start with storage because that's where the old CX-3 was really lacking. This area used to be taken up by just the multimedia controller and the manual handbrake. The handbrake has been swapped for an electronic one and the media system pushed up to the top, which has made way for this. So right now you can see three separate compartments, perfect for storing your wallet and your phone, and for instance, our camera gear. But if you decide you need more bottle or cup holders, and all you need to do is push this button, and there you go. The bottle can also be stored here, and because it's deeper, it allows for the armrest still to close. But if you've got a smaller coffee cup, for instance, you can push this and it creates a shallower compartment. And if you decide that you need to store a, a more bulkier items, then this center divider can lift out. But take note, this one is fixed in place. You're probably wondering, what do I do with this? Well, the engineers thought of that too, because underneath the armrest, there are two slots and that stores and clicks in place. And there you go, a total storage solution in just a small amount of space. I would say that the design of the cabin is the best in its segment. There are plenty of shapes, surfaces, and textures to keep it looking interesting without feeling like it's gone overboard. And there are also little details you wouldn't expect from a car of this class. For instance, the wraparound dashboard that extends to the door, the soft padded center area with contrasting stitching, and the inline vent, which looks very nice. In front of me is a very nicely designed three-spoke steering wheel. It's leather wrapped on our trim and has controls for the media on the left and cruise control on the right. And the instrument cluster is fairly simple. On the left there's a digital tech, a large center speedo in the middle, and a small multi-information display that can display the average fuel economy, average speed, and range. In the center is the seven inch Mazda infotainment system, and that's controlled with this rotary controller, which once again feels more expensive than you would expect. The controls are nice and tactile, and they're also knurled. You can also control it with the touchscreen, but keep in mind that when the car is moving, the touchscreen locks out, so you've only got this. And it is all the sources you would expect from AM and FM and DAB digital radio, along with AHA, Stitcher, and Bluetooth. Max board models and above get inbuilt satellite navigation, and all CX-3s uh, that arrive in Australia now also come fitted with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you plan on grabbing one of these, just double check with the dealer that your car has it fitted. The graphics are nice and mature, and the response times are okay as well. But this system hasn't really been updated since its launch in 2014, and I find some basic functions take a few too many presses of the controller to operate. So I think an update is in order. And whilst digging through the menus, I found an interesting quirk hidden in the vehicle settings. And it's here, in turn, it's the first car I've been in that allows you to set the loudness of the indicator volume. So just in case this sound annoys you to your wit's end, you can quiet it down. Master climate controls have always been very simple to use, and thankfully this is no different. It's a single zone system, so all the driver has to do is set the desired temperature and switch both auto and auto, and the car will do the rest. If you want to control the fan speed manually, just rotate the middle dial along with the fan direction. Recirc is done with the center button, and there's also rear and front windscreen defog. That's it, nice and easy. Below is a 12 volt power port, along with a auxiliary jack, two USB ports, and an SD card slot, although the card slot is taken up by the satellite navigation data. 
small tray to store your phone, and a typical Mazda shifter, straight line from park all the way to drive, ours is also leather wrapped, and flick it to the right for manual tiptronic mode. There's also a sport mode, and what that does is hold the revs higher for better response from the engine. And with an electronic parking brake, they've also integrated auto hold. So at a stop sign, you can take your foot off the brake and the car will stay put. Above the driver, two map lights, along with a sunglasses holder. The sun visors are pretty standard. And this bulky boy behind the rear view mirror houses the autonomous emergency braking system. And that's standard on every trim. All right, it's time for our famous chode test. So big, thick water bottle. Let's see how it stacks up inside the cabin. So driver's door bin, yes. Center console in the front, yes. If you take out the divider in the second one, it also fits there. And glove box, yes. So, full marks for the CX-3. The Achilles heel of the CX-3 can be found in the rear seats because space in the back is tight. I'm quite tall, just put it out there, I'm 6'3 or 190 centimeters, and I have the passenger seat scooched quite far forward, so I have just enough knee room. Ain't no one is going to be sitting behind me, and my head does hit the roof liner. But if you're shorter, you should be okay. The problem is, if you put children in the back, the rear windows are very small, and the rear belt line is very high. So if they're quite short, they might just get a face full of black plastic. There are bottle holders in the doors, and there is a rear center armrest with two additional cup holders. And they're also adaptive, which is a nice touch. But there are no rear air vents or rear USB ports. There are two isofix mounting points, two on each side. And the belt for the middle seat comes out from the backrest, which is much better than the roof-mounted jobs that some other manufacturers use. In the cargo area, space is listed at 264 litres, and if that doesn't sound like a lot, it's because it's not. The opening is a decent size, but there's just not a lot of space in the back. Perfectly okay for a weekly shop, and if you take the parcel shelf out, you could probably fit two suitcases in a pinch. There are four cargo tie-down hooks, and there is a handy false floor for separating your items. And underneath that, there is a temporary spare wheel. If you need more space, you can of course fold the seats flat and they go in a 60-40 split. But if you're going to be carrying bulky items in your new car, you'd probably want to look elsewhere than the CX-3. So why aren't Americans buying it in droves like we are? Part of the reason could be how the CX-3 is packaged. It's sold as a small SUV, and most people attribute those three letters with height and space. But it has the exact same ride height as a Mazda 3, along with less rear seat room and less cargo capacity. And it's clear that Americans like large cars. They also don't like hatchbacks. And unfortunately for the CX-3, whilst the design is beautiful, most people in the States see it as a slightly taller, small hatchback. And they're not wrong. If you peel away the marketing, that's really what this car is. So for the next generation, expect dimensions to grow. Behind the wheel is where the CX-3 claws back points, and that is it drives very well. Mazda seemed to nail the basics. The 2.0-litre engine won't set your heart on fire, but it is sufficiently powerful. And power comes on in a linear fashion, instead of nothing for a few seconds, and then sudden power as seen in modern turbo engines. But what really carries the weight is the gearbox. In a world of CVTs, the CX-3's six-speed automatic is the antidote we need. Shifts are done quickly and smoothly, and the accelerator is also hinged at the bottom, where it should be, in my opinion. The benefit of the car not riding as high as a traditional SUV, along with its firmer suspension, really pays dividends in corners. It's properly fun to chuck around bends. Watch this. Body roll is controlled and limited, whilst the steering is weighted perfectly. The driving position is also spot on. The instruments, steering wheel, pedals and the seat are all lined up perfectly. So using them feels very natural. A big complaint of the previous model was road noise. Mazda added thicker door panels, glass and headliner material. Engine noise is said to be reduced too. The result is a noticeable improvement to the model before. But at freeway speeds, tyre roll is still definitely there. If you go for the model with the 18-inch wheels, keep in mind that it will be louder as well. Overall, the CX-3 isn't the cheapest, fastest or most practical car in its class, but it does one thing better than the rest, and that is it's a great car to drive. It just depends on what your priorities are. If you enjoy getting behind the wheel, then the CX-3 is definitely worth a look. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and ensure you're subscribed to keep up with the newest uploads. And I'll see you in the next one.